for a limited time, $1 gets you full access to all the automotive industry news and content CBTNews.com has to offer. CBT News. Subscribe today. Welcome to CBT News with Bridget Fitzpatrick. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CBT News. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for joining us. Here's Chris Riggins with today's top stories. Thanks, Bridget. Starting off our coverage, Cox Automotive has predicted a 4% year-over-year increase in new vehicle sales for February, although it expects sales to decline slightly from January's unseasonably strong 15.7 million units. Both light vehicle and fleet sales are expected to grow with mid-size compact SUV, pickup and crossover cars reaching roughly 1.1 million by the end of the month. In its report, Cox Auto's analysts attribute this growth to better inventory, but warn that inflation, high auto loan rates and affordability are still limiting consumer demand. Up next, a study from auto marketing company Urban Science reveals that 2022 was the second consecutive year of growth in the number of new car dealerships. By January, the U.S. had a total of 18,257 storefronts, 27 more than it had at the same time last year. With 25 new locations, California's car business expanded the most, followed by Texas and Virginia. The number of franchises declined slightly in 2022, dropping 0.29% to 31,554. Urban Science expects new vehicle sales to reach 15 million before next year, 8% higher than last year's decade low of 13.4 million. On Wednesday, Mercedes-Benz and Google revealed a partnership that will introduce supercomputer-like navigation and autonomous driving software to the automaker's vehicle lineup. Drivers who pay for these features will have access to industry-first Level 3 self-driving capabilities. Earlier this year, Mercedes became the first Level 3 provider to be certified by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, placing it ahead of luxury EV competitor Tesla, which has encountered numerous issues since the rollout of its own driver assistance program. Chief Executive Ola Kalinius also revealed an agreement with NVIDIA Corp, which would reduce the automaker's expenditure on semiconductors. And wrapping up our coverage, EV brand Lucid has published disappointing fourth quarter revenue days after revising its reservation total from 34,000 to 28,000. Between October and January, the automaker brought in $257.7 million, roughly $43.3 million below its quarterly goal. The company did surpass its 2022 production target of 7,000 by an additional 180 units, but only after slashing its original target of 20,000 units. For 2023, the automaker hopes to build 10,000 to 14,000 units, with CEO Peter Rawlinson promising to amplify sales and marketing efforts to reach more customers. Don't go anywhere. Coming up next is Jim Ziegler, president of Ziegler Super Systems. We'll be right back. Delivering the news dealers count on for 10 years. Subscribe today and join thousands of other automotive professionals. CBT News, 10 years strong. The last time we spoke to Jim Ziegler, automotive retail veteran, speaker, and president of Ziegler Super Systems, he gave us his thoughts and predictions on the agency model and Ford CEO Jim Farley's controversial statements. So on this episode of Inside Automotive, we're catching up with Jim to see if his perspective has changed in the new year and what he's predicting now. Check it out. It looks like Farley came out not too long ago and said about two thirds of the dealerships have signed up on the program. I don't know where it stands today, but uh, what's your take on that? Well, you know, you know Jim, they, the ones who signed up, signed up under heavy pressure. You think? I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't lightly. Oh boy, I'm going to sign up for the EV program. I'm going to invest a million dollars. Sure. You know, the the truth of the matter is, I've I've been a great friend of Farley. I've been a, I've been a supporter. I've been a, a cheerleader for Jim Farley through the years. Yeah. I've got I his, know you. Have. I know. I've got I know. His cell phone on speed dial, but I guarantee you won't take my calls right now. You yeah. Know, just uh, because I've criticized him heavily in the last couple months. Sure. And the projection, the predictions I made on, on your show last time I was on have all come to pass. The Carvana predictions, 
Yeah. Ford Motor Company just lost $2 billion. And not only did they lose $2 billion, but that was 2022 was $20 billion short of 2021. They, they, they just uh, stopped sale on the EV Lightning, the, 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 their, their truck, their, their flagship model. I mean, because it was catching fire. I mean, the quality issues are running rampant right now, it, it, especially the Chicago plant, you know. So they've got quality problems. They took their eye off the ball. And at, at their recent uh, board meeting, um, CFO John Lawler, he said it was due to supply chain mismanagement and poor execution. Uh, I mean, it didn't say supply chain issues. Lawler said mismanagement. That falls right back on Farley. Yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Now, what what do you think in terms of 2023? You know, we're starting to see some headwinds out there, or not starting to see. They've been there in terms of interest rates and inflation and gas prices and some concerns out there for the economy. People are throwing the R word around pretty heavily now. No, um, we're, we're we're in a recession. I mean, why do people say we're about to go in a recession? We've been in a recession. Yeah. But the, the truth of the matter is uh, how deep the recession goes is, is more of an issue than whether or not we're in a recession. Right. And used car values are, are, are dropping tremendously. That's where, where Carvana got in a trick bag. Sure. You know, they're, 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 their buyers were standing at the auctions with their, their arms in the air until they, they had cramps. I know. And, um, you, you know, the, the used car business is going to be the dealer's salvation. If you look at Penske's profit on their on their used car standalone, it is absolutely phenomenal. And, and I, I wrote an article in, in one of the magazines, and I I advocated that dealers need to get in the used car business and do not be tied in with the factory. All right, be sure to watch this interview in its entirety right here at cbtnews.com. That wraps up our show for today, but we invite you to join us back here again tomorrow morning for all the latest news and trends impacting the retail automotive industry. And be sure to follow us on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Bridget Fitzpatrick. Thanks for watching and have a great day. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content. Join the number one most watched newscast in the automotive industry. CBT News. Subscribe today.